Hey gang, today I am showing you the Amplifier Box Mark II from Atomic. But Michael, you've shown us the Amplifier Box before. Yes. So there's a reason I'm showing it to you again. Well, th there's actually a couple reasons. One is because this video is brought to you by Atomic, maker of the Amplifier Box Mark II. Uh, that's one of the reasons. The other reasons, there's a lot of modelers out there. I get it, you have a lot of choices. You also have a nice selection of single pedal size modelers that you could put on your board. But I think this is one of the best, and maybe more importantly, the best bang for the buck. I'm not here to tell you that this is the best modeler on the planet. I mean, I couldn't convince you that a Helix was, or an Axe Effects, or Kemper was. I mean, that's a battle that's impossible to win. But what I am here to tell you is that at $399, this thing competes with all of the modelers. And did I mention it's $399? Yeah, I mean, this is, in terms of modelers, it's an affordable and it's high-end modeling going on in here. Let me give you a little breakdown of the pedal. When you take it out of the box and plug it in, you've got a three position favorite switch. This is three just great presets. You also have three positions for amps and cabs. Um, the cabs are a selection of IRs that sound fantastic, but you could load your own. You could load my own into there. Uh, but the ones they ship with sound really good. But that's not all you're limited to. Uh, if you hook up to the PC editor from uh, or Mac editor from the USB port, now you have access to like 16 or 17 different amps, uh, all the ones you'd want, a bass amps. You've got uh, power amps, which is cool because you could run a preamp into the power amp simulation, into the IR, and then you go out. So this is like a really cool pedal board little monster. Uh, now, if there's a negative to it, let's put this out there. It's totally mono. So uh, is that bad? Not necessarily. You put this on and you go straight into like an H9 right after it, get your stereo, ta-da, and you could go straight you know, two signals into your board or to front of house, whatever. So becoming stereo is not really an issue. You come out of this mono into your pedals, delays, choruses, and everything becomes uh, beautiful and super stereo. Aside from the amp simulation, tone stacks, and EQs, there's also fully parametric EQs inside there. There's uh, reverbs, mono reverbs. They're okay. They're nice for adding some ambience to the sound. There's a very nice delay that has several modes, digital, tape, you know, analog, warm. There's great compressors in here. There's a pedal and a studio compressor. They're in the front end before it hits the amp, uh, you know, the gain and stuff. So it'd be like a pedal or running like an 1176 in the front. I think of it as just two shades of pedals, but they are good. I'm not usually a fan of software compressors in uh, modelers, but they did it right. They sound really good. There's also a boost. Uh, you know, you've got your clean boost, tube screamers, distortion fuzz, and there's a noise gate. So it's fully loaded. You know, like where do you control this? Well, you'll set up your sound in your presets on the PC editor, or Mac editor, and then you just save it in here. You could assign the foot switches to kind of anything you want it to do. So you could have your clean sound, you could jump over to your dirty sound, and then you could add a boost, you know, it's really cool. You could have the delays turn on and off, whatever, you know. So that's really the gist of this. The presets it comes with sounds great. I made three new presets that I used in the opening song that you can download for your amplifier box mark two. Turn this into a big hairy amplifier box. <laughs> So one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is that when I was talking to Tom over at Atomic, uh, 
I was like, this is what I'd like to do. And I think they're being really brave about this. I want to take some of the biggest names in pedal modelers and let's AB it. We're going to do a straight AB. So I've got two of the Universal Audio pedals. I've got the Dream and the Ruby. That's like a, a Fender Deluxe and a Vox AC30. And I have the Strymon Iridium. All of these are very popular pedal modelers. Let's throw up some ABs and take a listen. So my bias, of course, I have a little bias. I'm gonna do my best to make them all sound as good as they can uh, and as sim in the similar wavelength. So they are comparable. I'm gonna run them all mono. The Universal Audio pedals are mine. I like them a lot. Uh, the Strymon I have on loan. Um, I'm not as familiar with it, but it's very straightforward. So um, it's not gonna be hard to dial in a sound on that that's comparable. And uh, we'll j I'll just play the same thing twice and uh, we'll go through it. So I wasn't going to give my opinion, but actually I am going to give my opinion, right? We're, we're all friends here. Uh, so I still feel like the Atomic Firebox held its own. That little box is a super chameleon. It held its own, I felt, against uh, everything. The UA pedals, when they're doing their specialty, they have a cool extra dimension to them, but I think that might be from not using IRs and using their sort of dynamic cabinet emulations. They're one trick ponies if you consider, you know, like tons of variations on a Fender Deluxe or variations on an AC30 a one trick. So you're paying $399 for the Fender, $399 for the AC30, and then they don't really have anything at the moment that goes beyond pure vintage tones. I think the Iridium is for someone that does not want to do a desktop editor or app editor or anything like that. Under no circumstances will they touch an external editor because uh, everything's on the front panel. I mean, you can swap out IRs, but it's really designed as a front panel kind of thing. Uh, I think it suffers a little bit in some places like I felt like I would like more EQ, like it just stopped here and it just needed to keep going. And in terms of the heavy stuff, like that sort of got kind of boxy and mid-rangey for me. Uh, strangely, the AC30 model, when you crank it up, sort of transforms into sort of a heavy thing. And then there's a 
Mesa 412 cabinet option on that. So that was a weird choice. But the Iridium always sounded good. It was kind of, felt like it had a sound on all of them. I thought the amplifier box had sort of the opposite sound spectrum to the Iridium. The Iridium was sort of mid domed and the firebox is a little more mid scooped, which really lent to the more rock and more aggressive tones. But again, I thought it held its own pretty well on the vintage stuff as well. Uh, what did you guys think? Please uh, let me know in the comments and thank you to Tom at Atomic for letting me do this video. And uh, thanks for watching.